One Punch Man chapter 193 just confirmed that Saitama's name will go down in history, ending an 800 year old war and saving humanity from complete extinction. It also confirms Saitama's new training arc, which will make him the greatest hero ever, preparing him for his fight with God. Now after spending a solid five minutes staring at the cover page, don't lie, I know you studied it closely, looking for easter eggs you probably told yourself. Let me guess, right? Uh, you found two big ones, maybe? You're goddamn right. But past Mosquito Girl, we see Saitama facing off against one of the nine warriors of the Dragon Alliance, Rangor, and one shot in it. This lands Saitama in a great deal of praise from a group known as the Saints, who have been in a long war with the Dragon Alliance. They've been guarding what is known as a Seal Stone, which stops a powerful ancient dragon from being resurrected. But Thanks to the caped baldy, they can rest assured that these stones won't fall into the wrong hands. Humanity has been saved, and for that very reason, Saitama's name will forever be edged into the footnotes of history. Saitama's a true hero, though, as his power has grown even stronger following the events of chapter 187, where he overcame his urge to take part in hero gambling to instead save a citizen from a robbery. Here, he's doing the same again. Whilst chasing a thief, he just so happened to save the day, and that's all he really cares about. In fact, he'd rather not be in the footnotes of history if it's down to him. This is Saitama we're talking about after all. He'd rather be at home playing video games with Kink. But instead, he's found himself in the middle of a big lore dump about the ancient dragon and how it's a colossal beast and the embodiment of destruction which destroyed civilizations in just a few days. In fact, it's incredible cruelty earned it the name Cruel Dragon. <laughs> That's just lazy writing. Now, here's a fun fact for those of you who don't remember. This dragon was actually revealed to us all the way back in chapter 164 of the manga. During the battle between Saitama and Garo, a temple with the head of the cruel dragon rises from beneath the water as a result of a powerful strike from Garo. Now, if you didn't know that, you're actually legally obliged to ding the notification bell. It's either that or use code ABD on Gamersups. Yeah, they're your only two choices, I'm afraid. How about no? Moving on, as the legend states, many ancient soldiers came together and sacrificed their lives to eventually seal the dragon's key away in nine separate seal stones, leaving the saints to watch over it for all eternity. In spite of this, some people believe themselves to be dragonborn and are making it their duty to resurrect the monster. That is the purpose of the organization they belong to called Deathbone. The recent increase of monster occurrences have given this group an opportunity to rise up and complete their mission. And had it not been for Saitama defeating the ones ambushing the saints, the entire planet would have been in danger. It doesn't matter though, says the surviving Deathborn member. The time will come when the cruel dragon shall return. When exactly is that? Well, in like 10 years? Maybe? A hundred? How about right now? That's right, you've probably thought that this story sounds incredibly cliche and quite frankly, Saitama agrees. As he comes up with a solution that keeps both the saints and Deathborn happy. He basically speed runs Dragon Ball's first arc by rounding up the nine sealing orbs that has the cruel dragon's key, resurrecting the creature and fulfill Deathbone's goal to then defeat it and put the saints out of a job. And um, also because he wants to fight strong creatures, just like Goku in the Android saga, where he'd rather fight androids than destroy Dr. Gero's lab. But what does that have to do with me? No, no. He's got a point. Thus, as the dragon is resurrected in front of Saitama, declaring that the hatred it has accumulated over the years will be repaid with the lives of humanity, it shouts, Be, be gone! gone Only to get one shot anyway. <laughs> Now, this might sound awfully familiar to you all. After all, let's recap quickly, shall we? An ancient creature that has been sealed away with its powers enclosed inside of multiple cubes that have been hidden away in faraway places. Check. A group of individuals who believe in serving the creature and resurrecting it. Check. It's so powerful that only Saitama can defeat it. Check. You see where I'm going with this? This story ain't just some random lore dump, as this entire cruel dragon arc, which Saitama just speed ran, is super similar to the entire story of his destined battle against God. That's actually the whole 
reason why the order of the webcomic has been adjusted slightly for the manga as this chapter later references God as well. Now remember, in chapter 139, Monster King Orochi stumbles upon a tablet which stated that a worthy sacrifice was needed in order to resurrect God and believes Saitama to be the chosen one. And these seal cubes which stored the dragon's power are coincidentally very similar to God's cubes that were revealed in chapter 137. These cubes containing God's powers have the ability to turn humans into monsters as well as act as a communication device with God, corrupting the minds of the weak willed. Blast mentions in chapter 164 that the battle between Garo and Saitama was causing the magnetic and gravitational fields on Earth to go crazy, breaking the dimensional seal which trapped God. And so, with chapter 193, One Punch Man has come full circle, as it's not only parodying shonen tropes anymore, but also parodying itself now. Blast and his Guardians of the Galaxy pals represent what the Knights are calling the Saints here, and those that are weak-willed and follow God's plans such as Homeless Emperor and Orochi are the Dragon Ball. Now, as we know, God is more than just 800 years old. After all, the mural underground which Orochi found depicts creatures that look a lot like prehistoric beings. In the world of One Punch Man, dinosaurs roamed the Earth, the Terra Lizard Clan, 300 million years ago. This suggests that God has been manipulating things as far back as then. However, it's only after Saitama's birth that God has ramped things up. Not only was it confirmed in chapter 172 that Saitama was responsible for the increase in monster attacks as well as God being drawn closer to the dimension, but 20 years ago when Saitama was only 5 years old, Boris was told by a fortune teller that he would find a worthy opponent on Earth. His minions didn't believe this prophecy to be true, but we know that fortune telling is a legitimate ability in the world of One Punch Man. Now what does all this have to do with God? Well in chapter 28, the fortune teller Shababawa foresees the worst tragedy of the era and warns that the Earth is in danger. Originally it was presumed that Boris's invasion was the tragedy Shababawa foretold, but that's not the case. In chapter 173, it is revealed that Blast has been fighting God for, get this, 20 years, the same time of when Boris was told his prophecy. And considering that Blast will only take action when humanity faces a true crisis, it can be presumed that God is the entity that Shibabawa was referring to. Furthermore, in chapter 176, we learn that Shibabawa's fortune telling ability came from a power called the Third Eye, which Psychos also tried to learn as a teenager. This ability to see the future comes from none other than God himself, as seen when he corrupts Psychos' mind upon her use of the third eye. Therefore, we can presume that the fortune teller that gave Boris his prophecy also got corrupted by God's third eye ability. After all, as Boris dies and tells Saitama about how prophecies can't be trusted, the manga purposely focuses on the moon, the very same place where God has been watching everything unfold from. Whoa. Now in the case of this cruel dragon story, Saitama parallels Blast, where he finds all the cubes and destroys the final boss, foreshadowing the end of One Punch Man. In other words, Saitama is confirmed to be the weapon humanity needs to save the Earth from its biggest crisis. Not like you really needed me to tell you that anyway. <laughs> but just like in this chapter, Saitama doesn't care for his name to be edged in history, as exemplified by him going straight home to just play video games with King. We don't care. This panel right here parallels the events in chapter 190 to this but from King's point of view. In that chapter, King goes back home after a tiring search for true strength, only to be disappointed and return to his true liberation, video games. King rambled on to Saitama on how people think he's the sh but struggled to keep his image intact by being a weakling. Similarly, in this chapter, Saitama admits his ignorance about the world and its various cultures. He legit thought that cults and seals only existed in the world of anime and manga. This goes back to King's speech to Saitama in chapter 76. He feels that he has reached his limit and can no longer grow anymore. But King explained to him that what makes a true hero isn't just becoming the strongest there is, but learning about yourself. To see new scenery, you must forge 
ahead. This also applies in this chapter because Saitama is clueless about the world at large and what it has in store for our hero. A lot of people go to places to do some soul searching and it's about time Saitama does that as well. But before he can begin thinking of his dream holiday, his chain of thought is interrupted by a doorbell ring. He's greeted with the presence of none other than Flashy Flash, who is searching for Monaco and asks Saitama to join him in his quest by becoming his disciple. Now this was actually foreshadowed in chapter 126, when Flash decided that Saitama needs a teacher to polish his strength after acknowledging his unparalleled strength is too rough around the edges. In their first meeting, Flash mistook Saitama as a monster and the two had a brief scuffle. After witnessing Saitama's abilities firsthand, Flash shows respect towards the caped baldy but claims that he still had much to learn. And he's not the only one either. Remember that a Mind Mask also looks up to Saitama's strength but believes that he also needs guidance in order to become the world's perfect superhero. That being said, Saitama don't give a damn and just slams the door in Flashy Flash's face anyway. First time. <laughs> But what's even more hilarious is that Genos was listening to this whole conversation and peeps out the door after hearing the word disciple. <laughs> He's like an insecure girlfriend. But speaking of Genos, he is disgusted by Flash's behavior and attempts to meet his master without his permission. He tells Flash that if he has something to say to Saitama, then say it to him, but in 20 words or less, referencing the instruction that Saitama gave to him whilst being told his backstory in chapter seven. Flash responds by saying, why would he tell such confidential matters to someone as rude as Demon Cyborg? To which Genos says, if you don't accept my conditions, then get out. The two have a little scrap, but a stopped by Saitama as they're going to end up damaging his brand new house. Thus, Saitama introduces King and Genos to the S-Class hero Forlocks in the face, which is actually what he called Flashy Flash back in chapter 115 when he thought that he was a monster. The reason for this is because he's forgotten his actual hero name. King tries to help Saitama, but is stopped by Flashy Flash. Wait, King, let him try and remember on his own. Cla... Cla... The Flash? Ah, yes, clavicle smash. Understandably, this struck a nerve in Flash's head, and so he barged into the door, making Saitama fall onto his ass. I can almost hear the power scalers sweating at such an incredible feat. Now, seeing how Genos has Saitama's back at all times, Flash treats him like a dog and asks him to go sit over there. But this comes back to bite him later on when Saitama hilariously closes the door behind Flash as he tells him to follow for a mission, prompting Genos to say the same words right back at him. Now, the mission Flash wants Saitama to be a part of is to look for Monaco, who is revealed to hold clues to unveiling a massive secret of God's true identity. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Monaco is the monster that Saitama and Flashy Flash took under their custody and acted as their guide to the monster King's Lair in chapter 122. Remember, the three of them were together in chapter 139 when they touched the cube and heard God's voice for the first time before being saved by Blast. After a little bit of a rusty start together, the trio began to share a closer bond than we originally thought. Close enough for Flash to risk his life to save her and Saitama to save her from Blast's intense questioning, ultimately sparing her life as a friend despite already fulfilling her duty as a hostage and escort. Following the climax of the Monster Association arc, Manako seemingly went completely MIA. However, we do see her in chapter 192 on a faraway mountain encountering King whilst he was on his way home after leaving the final training ground, which is ironic considering that Flashy Flash didn't allow King to sit in the meeting regarding God and Monaco when he's the only one that's actually seen her since. It's just the way it is. Now it makes a lot of sense that Murata and One have changed the events of the webcomic in regards to Flashy Flash's character and motives to make him more involved with the search for God. This is because he comes from the Ninja Village, an evil place led by a mysterious man who has lived for 300 years. Now 15 years ago this ninja leader was defeated by Blast and sent into a coma. The fact that Blast was there at all all but confirms one of God's cubes must have been present. After all, that's basically his one and only job. There's also the fact that this place itself is one big ass cube, just like the Tsukiyomi facility, which Blast also invaded and destroyed to retrieve one of God's cubes. So we can probably presume that this ninja leader may have made a deal with God too, considering he likely had a cube and has also lived for 300 plus years. Now, of course, there's only one way to truly find out, but until then, watch this video on your screen right now and enjoy some more absolutely peak fiction, I tell thee. It is good.